Hey everybody, how's it going? It's the Daily Shooter, and there's nothing worse than the spread of tyranny, but it's happened. In Virginia, there was a recent election, and unfortunately, Virginia got california This channel is proud to be supported by the Firearms Policy Coalition. Make sure you check that link in the description box, become a member, and donate when you can. Now, Mr. Guns and Gear already did an excellent video on this topic, so if you guys want more information, you can always head over there. But I want to approach this from a different aspect. Being a former Californian, somebody who lived there for 43 years and only moved just a few months ago, uh, I saw some really eerie similarities between not only what happened in Virginia, but also what's being proposed in Virginia. It is as if they're taking from the California playbook and simply applying it in Virginia. Okay, so here's what happened. In a very recent election in Virginia, the Democrats took control of the state legislature, but they also have control of the executive branch. The governor is also a Democrat. Now, when this happens, very similar to California, who is in the same position, completely controlled by Democrats, there's essentially nothing that will stand in the way of them passing whatever laws that they want. And they've already made some proposals in terms of gun control. Gun control is a major issue for Democrats, and whenever they have control, that's one of the first things that they're going to go for. They're going to go ahead and do this before any uh, next elections come up in a couple years. They are going to push this through as fast as humanly possible. And again, whatever laws that the Democrats and the legislature pass, uh, you know that the governor more than likely is going to sign it. And a lot of the new proposals that they have are eerily similar to what's going on in California. For instance, they want to impose uh, firearms rationing. Now in California, they have that exactly. I mean, it is as if they took the California playbook, the California your blueprint and said, let's just go ahead and do this in Virginia. Now, rationing is essentially when the government says you can only purchase one firearm per month, and that's what they want to do in Virginia. They want to limit people to one firearm per month. They also want magazine capacity restrictions. So again, very similar to California, 10 round magazine capacity. It's an arbitrary number. I don't know who came up with that number and said firearms are safe right up until 10 rounds. Once you get to that 11th round, it becomes too dangerous. I'm not sure exactly who came up with that, but it's the most ridiculous thing uh, that I've ever heard of. So again, you have rationing, magazine controls. They want uh, assault weapons bans. Now, interestingly enough, California has really played with the definition of what's considered an assault weapon, and they continue to play with that definition until they get rid of just about every semi-automatic long gun, and maybe even a handgun, that they can. So they want to get rid of what they call assault weapons and they're gonna adjust that definition uh, until they get their achieved goal. And it's gonna be very similar in Virginia. They wanna get rid of assault weapons. They wanna get rid of your magazines. You know, they wanna ration you out to one a month. And they are, again, going exactly with what California did. Now, I'll explain in just a minute why it's so important that we're comparing Virginia to California, but first I want to go over a few more proposals here uh, that could definitely affect the people of Virginia. Now, the first one's going to be a red flag law. Virginia wants to implement a red flag law that is extremely broad, very similar to the one that is imposed already in California. In California, you could have an employer, an employee, a teacher, and, and mind you, not somebody who knew you recently, but somebody who knew you up to six months ago. So let's say that you were in a class uh, in in college and uh, you went through this class six months later that teacher could still go to the courthouse and petition the court to have your firearms removed so even though she hasn't seen you in six months he or she hasn't seen you in six months they could still go to the courthouse and they could still try and have your firearms removed i mean it could essentially just be an acquaintance at that point so with all the different people that could file one of these firearms restraining orders or red flag laws against you it's so broad that anybody that has an issue with you could very easily go down and have your second amendment rights taken away and just go around due process altogether so what happens is Somebody wants to file something against you. They go to the courthouse, they sign an affidavit, that affidavit goes to the judge. The judge then uh, orders or doesn't order uh, the law enforcement to go to your house in full tactical gear and remove you of your second amendment rights without due process. That's that's basically what, what happens. Afterwards, once they've seized your private property, then you can go to court and try and prove that you're not a danger to anybody. I'm not exactly sure how you would prove you're not a danger to somebody. And I don't know if there's going to be somebody sitting over on the prosecution side uh, as a character assassin trying to prove that maybe you will. 
So I don't know if you're gonna have to fight somebody, but you're gonna have to have a lawyer, you're gonna have to spend a bunch of money, and it's happened. It's happened all across the country since these new red flag laws have been implemented. People have lost their Second Amendment rights, they've lost due process, and in some cases, it's even become tragic. You law enforcement officer, you go to the door of somebody trying to remove their Second Amendment rights, and they're one of those people who say, hell no, you're not gonna come in here. Everything that follows that doesn't need to happen, and it is, uh, it's a tragedy when it does. So. Red flag laws are a massive negative effect and they do nothing to stop crime whatsoever. Now, Virginia also wants to ban silencers and in California silencers have been banned for a long time. As a matter of fact, you can't even install a threaded barrel into a pistol in the state of California. That in itself is illegal in California. So in Virginia, they want to remove suppressors or silencers. Now, by banning silencers, you do absolutely nothing. I'm not sure exactly what they're trying to accomplish by banning silencers. Maybe they watched, you know, too many movies and they think that you can just walk around in complete quiet and nobody would even know you're coming from the next room over. Maybe that's what they think. Uh, it's more than likely what they think because I think a lot of Democrats not really having uh, any experience with firearms whatsoever, I think really that's probably what they're going off of. They're going off of the, the media and they're going off of movies and if they see a silencer uh, go and you don't even hear anything, then that's probably what they think is, you know, the actual case. Now, another thing they want to do is they want to change a current misdemeanor to a felony. The law is allowing a child unsupervised access to a firearm. Uh, that right now is a misdemeanor. They want to increase that to a felony, but at the same time, they want to change the definition of what's considered a child from 14 to 18 years old. So let's say you have a 17 year old at home and he is uh, able to access a firearm. Now, as a parent, you could be charged with a felony. And I wanna give you guys a little bit of an example here. My brother has extremely responsible kids. Uh, his uh, oldest kid is definitely old enough to take care of himself and if he had to defend the house. So if my brother wants to allow him access to a firearm, should he be the only one home, maybe with his younger siblings, I don't see a problem with him doing that. I think he's responsible enough to do that. But as a parent and as a teenager, I think that that's their choice to work that out together. In Virginia's case, that would now make my brother a felon. So a responsible child, who knows how to uh, you know, responsibly handle a firearm, knows how to operate a firearm safely, and has the ability to defend the house should my brother be gone for you know, an extended period of time, in Virginia, again, you become a felon. So uh, there are some, you know, just some really bad things coming down the pipeline in, in, in Virginia. So again, with the majority Democrat in the legislature and the governor's office, it's gonna be very easy for them to say, okay, this law is passed in the legislature, we'll send it off to the governor's desk, and there's a high likelihood that he's gonna sign it. He's already expressed that he wants to sign these bills and he wants to focus on gun control going forward. So it's not like it's a big secret or anything. Uh, he, this is something that he expressly wants. Now, this is why it's so important that we're making the comparison here between California and Virginia. Because all of these laws are already in play in California and have been in play in California for years, it's very easy to look at California and say, do they work? And the answer is no. I wanna ask you guys, anybody that's visited California, anybody that's visited San Francisco, anybody that's visited Los Angeles, do you feel safe just walking around at night in LA? If I was to walk around at, at night in downtown LA, I would not feel safe. But how's that possible? They've essentially implemented every single firearm law you can imagine. So there shouldn't be anybody out with firearms uh, because they're, well, one, if you're out with a firearm in, in LA, it's supposed to be locked in a vehicle, you know, locked away. And there's, there's laws that are supposed to prevent that, right? No, you don't feel safe because criminals don't follow laws. So we can look at California, not only as a, a blueprint like Virginia is doing in terms of what gun control they can impose, but also a blueprint as to what's gonna happen once these laws are imposed. So we have a lot of good people in the state of California that own firearms that are sick and tired of the tyranny. They're sick and tired of all these laws coming down and they simply will not comply anymore. So you end up with good people who are simply following the constitution, which is supposed to be the law of the land, but somehow California has superseded that. You have good people who are going to jail. They are losing their life savings or becoming in debt for the rest of their lives trying to defend themselves. And they're spending time in prison for something that should be constitutionally protected. So what you have is a criminal element 
in the state of California, especially in, in big cities, a criminal element that's allowed to basically run free because obviously the good guy is going to be following the law. The guys who are out there to do harm are not. And so you end up with an uneven playing field. You end up with a criminal element that has a massive advantage over the average citizen, so to speak, okay? So again, in California, we've seen that these things don't work. The only thing that these do, that, that these new laws do, is they take good people and they throw them in jail. They take people who have never even had a speeding ticket in their life and turn them into instant felons overnight. That is what we can see in the future. We don't have to guess what would happen in Virginia if these things took place. It's our crystal ball. Look at California, look at what happened, and ask yourself, is that what you want for Virginia? Do you want Virginia to be a less safe place? Do you want uh, the criminal element in Virginia to have the upper hand all the time? You know, the only people who are gonna follow these laws are people that follow laws already. The people who don't follow these laws now are just gonna get a big advantage. You see that meme that goes around all the time where you say, uh, you know, it's a, it's a meme basically that says criminals love gun control. And it's the truth. You know, the, the, it, there's, there's no even playing field anymore. You basically just knock the good guy down and you have lifted the bad guy up. That is what Virginia does with these laws. And these laws aren't gonna protect anybody. You know, they always say, well, if we could just save one, if we could just do something, you know, that's a big one. If we could just, if we could just do something, right? Well, all your somethings are not gonna affect any of the uh, criminal people that are already out there intent on doing harm to others. It's, it's not, it's, well, we have, again, we have proof right here. All of these laws and more are already implemented and have been running for a long time. I mean, there's, there's even ammunition uh, registration and background checks in California now. So if you give them an inch in Virginia, guaranteed that's just the very beginning of the next mile. Now try and keep in mind the next time you forsake California or you forsake New York or any of these other really high gun control states that while you might be ignoring the fact that they exist or just say, I don't even want to deal with it. I'm just glad I don't live there. Try and remember that these people who hate the second amendment and for the most part just hate the freedoms that we enjoy in this country they have not forgotten these states okay they're looking at these states and saying i wonder if i can do that in mine and if i get control that's what i'm going to do and then they go there for ideas you know they just pick the brains of these states that uh, have already experienced this tyranny and then they just go ahead and they apply it in their state so it's not just a matter of stopping gun control from further encroaching which is something that we need to do we need to fix the problems with gun control that are currently in the states where people are affected because if we can fight back against them say that they're unconstitutional maybe take these laws to the supreme court and have a supreme court ruling even though they haven't really been hearing second amendment cases nonetheless if we can still say we're gonna fix these states and I'm not gonna forsake California, I'm not gonna forsake New York, I'm gonna go ahead and help in any way that I can, then maybe in the end, the people who wanna implement these laws in their state will see that they're gonna have a very, very expensive fight on their hands and maybe there's a chance that this could end up working negatively, maybe they don't wanna do it. Also, if the citizens of the state of Virginia were to speak up, stand up, rally, do whatever they can to really say, look, this is, we don't want this in our state. And they say, look, you're not gonna get my vote. You know, I, I wasn't aware that you were gonna do this or you know, so-and-so that I know voted for you, but if you do this, he's not gonna vote for you again next time because look, you can't change the election. They're already in, in office uh, unless you have somebody taken out of office, but that's really difficult and very time consuming. So you say, look, well, next time the elections come up, you're not gonna get reelected. Maybe you can at least get them to think twice and then donate whatever you can to whatever gun group you can. Whatever gun group is there supporting you directly, make sure you do that. And don't do it to something you know that's so broad. I, I, I you know, I hate to be one of those people, but it's, at the same time, don't donate to the NRA when you know that uh, one or two million dollars of the money that you're going to donate is just going to go to a CEO or a CFO or something like that. You know, donate to the people that put the money back into the fight for your Second Amendment rights. That's so important to me. You know, that's why I am so happy to have the Firearms Policy Coalitions, you know, support this channel is because that's what they do. These are like grassroots organizations that started small and are, are gaining, uh, uh, you know, all of, all of this uh, following, but at the same time, the money is being reinvested into the fight for our liberties and our Second Amendment rights. So, look, uh, guys, in Virginia, you got to be strong here. You got to stand up and you got to fight this, or it's going to end up really, really bad. So, uh, I do wish the best for you. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.